you know, I really liked how we were able to take it from task one all the way to six with evaluation because uh, I find with the big six that um, we tend to focus on more, you know, like one task and then we they go on and do something else. I, I love the idea of being able to, to, to do a task and then perhaps do another one later on in the year, but where you're trying to see, help the kids and teachers see the whole process, whether you do it all at once in several weeks or throughout the year, I like the model and the, the availability of seeing how the whole process occurs. One of the non-negotiables that I just introduced to my department was that there has to be a research project every quarter. That's scary to teachers who can only define research in one mode, and that is nine weeks at a time, um, beginning to end from note cards to, you know, all the grueling one-inch margins, you name it, all the way to the end. Um, and so we needed this time to redefine what can research look like? How can it be fragmented yet still not isolated so that kids can't apply it elsewhere and certainly not isolated so that they can't make it into a comprehensive research unit, but hopefully enough so that um, they can continually have experience with the different aspects, whether it be big six, big, you know, any, any other research model, but simply repeated um, repeated use, experience, manipulation of research throughout so that when it does come time for a big project, whether that's the first time in UNLV, hopefully it's not, but in even the classroom at Clark County or in Green Valley High School, that it's not overwhelming, burdensome, and um, where kids don't sit back apathetically because they just don't know how to approach it. Sherwin and I are going to try our hardest to really go cross-curricular. Um, often the burden is put on ELA teachers, um, and it's not that we have to pull that away. Absolutely, it should be. We're, we're the best versed in writing, um, so it should be on our shoulders. However, if, if, I, if, if what I've already spoken about, the idea that we have to give them repeated um, uh, opportunities to use these strategies, if that's the case, it has to happen more than that one period throughout the day. And if that English teacher doesn't get to it that day, they shouldn't go the rest of the day without it. Um, he and I, Sherwin and I, were talking about how what this might look like in a math class, um, which is certainly outside of the scope of what research usually takes. Um, and I said, well, what if they have to uh, prove a theory, um, a mathematical theory, and have to explain why and defend through cited information? You know, pulling from resources, what are um, most meritable resources versus the least meritable resources. So we're even trying to go beyond English language arts. And again, that's not to try and cop out of it in any way. It's simply to make sure that cross-curricular truly means that all teachers have a similar language when they're approaching. I mean, if synthesizing is the word, then everybody has to use it so that these kids finally, um, it becomes habit, I guess, more than it just does happen, stands. We're going to have our kids work through the big six as a group. So they will be in small collaborative groups. Um, we are going to have them build their own kind of digital collection or exhibition um, based on some aspect of um, American culture or history or even in conjunction with literature. And I've done this in the past with World Lit Honors using global literacy. Um, but when I saw the digital collections presented um, on the first day of the Institute, some little light bulb went off and I thought, my kids could do that. They could collect primary document sources, they could conduct interviews, they could go out into the community and find their own sources, they could draw things from other sources such as, you know, the UNLV collections, the Library of Congress. So I was very excited and I thought, well, how about we have them go through the big six, the research project, help them um, generate ideas. We, of course, we have some, a few little things to iron out. Generate some sort of thematic um, idea for their collection and then go out and find these sources. They would come up with two or three essential questions on their own and they're used to this because we're a project-based learning school. So they know what essential questions are, but usually those are generated by the teacher. And so we want the kids to generate their own essential questions that will drive their research. Um, so then we'll work through each step, and um, that's why I think this was especially beneficial because Mr. Mitchell, the librarian at West, and I were able to sit down and talk about each part and what we would do together to facilitate. And um, so we will have them build their own collection, which will eventually, and then they will present it. And ideally, and I've already run this by a couple of people, I would like the university librarians to come out and serve as our panel of judges. Because when we do project-based learning, we usually bring in outside experts in that field 